we just got a little less than 12 weeks and I am just buzzing, just feeling so good, feeling so ready. Just gonna get weird. Welcome back YouTube. Today we got a push day. Um, so pretty standard, a lot of chest, decent amount of shoulders, and then obviously some biceps, triceps. Um, but yeah, we're using the 360 here. It's kind of a dual hydraulic system. Uh, so it's all concentric. Every pull requires a push. So we're just kind of mobilizing the shoulders, getting the chest warmed up, getting everything kind of just blood flowing and a uh, nervous system pumping, so. Get your cardio up a little bit. Yeah, so the cool thing about this is it's really a full body warm up, right? With like a fly motion. I'm flying using my chest and then I'm pulling back in a reverse fly. So using the rear delts on the way back. Same thing for a push motion. I'm gonna push it forward and then use those lats to pull it back. And then of course, just shoulders, just kind of just fine tune uh, more so neuro proprioception work there. Just trying to really feel the shoulder stable in that joint as much as possible, going slight small circles inward, small circles outward. It's pretty basic, but just really fires everything up. Feels really, really good. So now we can get into some weights. Yeah, not trying to go all the way to failure. I know I could have done like half a rep on that last one. So just keeping maybe a half rep in the tank, we'll call it. But yeah, everything's feeling really good. Things feeling really warmed up. I actually really like starting on this incline press as opposed to hitting flies prior because then I feel like I'm a little bit more pre-fatigued. It is, it is cool to be in a neighborhood that's like that involved. Like my brother, Grant's neighborhood's like that. They have like block parties and shit. I don't even know my neighbors. I don't know their names. You could probably afford it. You just spend too much money. Well, you don't spend too much money. That felt good. This is this is a back down set to be fair. It's a, it's a weird thing to say though. It's like, you know exactly what I'm saying though. And it's like, you, you just smell, you smell like an old person. Now like you, you definitely clean yourself, but like not with the right stuff. Okay, so hitting some exaggerated flies here with the foam roller setup. Uh, just a little warm-up set, trying to feel the weight out. Yeah, just make sure positions and everything are feeling good. So now we'll get into some working sets, just go a little bit heavier and try to keep everything in that 12 to 15 rep range. We're just focusing on really getting a deep stretch in the chest and just keeping that quality stimulus every single rep.
Oh, yeah, come on. Uh. Oh. Uh. Make that orangutan face on that good rep. You're like, We did a little new fit work on this left shoulder, left trap yesterday. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, definitely go back and see. I think it's like, like minute 20. So go back, see that video. And uh, yeah, we immediately started just freeing up this shoulder, freeing up all the tension that was in my neck and trap here. And now my chest is just firing. These flies feel unreal. Just quality, 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 quality. The chest is feeling unreal. We're gonna hit one little hypertrophy coach finisher here. So we'll go flies as long as we can. Um, maybe leave like one in the tank so we're not actually failing. And then we'll go into presses and uh, probably leave one in the tank there. So don't be surprised if you see like six flies and two presses. Yeah, great little mechanical drop set finisher. If you're not familiar with the term mechanical drop set, it just means we're starting off with a movement that has the least leverage, the, the least uh, strength, like a fly, right? You're not gonna be able to fly more than you can press. So hitting flies and then just going into a press has more mechanical leverage. You're gonna be stronger in that position. So in a way you're not fatiguing in the same way that you would just going flies to failure. You do as many flies as you can and then you keep the chest stimulated by moving to a stronger, more leveraged movement. Okay, so using the prime uh, flat press, essentially we're gonna just do everything in the uh, lengthened bias phase. So that's gonna be position five on here. If you have a plate loaded, it would be like adding equal weight to one and three. So it's gonna be hardest in the beginning and middle range where that pec's under the most length, the most potential for growth, the most micro trauma occurring, which is gonna result in more hypertrophy um, and then a little easier at the top. So as long as we can get like two thirds of the rep, we'll probably keep pushing, but we're gonna try and keep things as clean as possible and leave the variables out. So good. Freeing up that shoulder yesterday on the new fit. Oh man, wish I did it sooner. But we just gotta keep that maintenance up because everything just feels dialed in. So 
so everything in range, which is good. Um, typically we're feeling a little bit more fatigued here, so the weights that we use are a little more on the shaky side, but drop a weight down, hit a set 12 to 15, move on to dips. Again, using dips kind of as a lead in to some shoulder work. So I like to think of it as like, you're using maybe like a 40, 40, 20 split of chest, shoulders, triceps, compared to something like this, which is maybe 60, 20, 20 chest, shoulders, triceps. Um, so kind of leads a good transition to then go into some more direct shoulder work where it might flip and you're gonna use 60, 20, 20 shoulders, chest, triceps. So that's just kind of the way that I think about it. It's not an exact science, but it makes sense to me. It's like you're starting off with like 10 sets of 10 for your first movement like German volume training. You get to, I mean, his app's great. One of my buddies is doing a, doing the same program on the standard Seabum app and it's a, he's like, yeah, but I have like four different fly movements on my chest day. And I was like, yeah, maybe swap those, like swap one of those for a press. Like you can, you can change the movements, especially because if you don't have like the machine or, you know, like if you have a hack squat, we don't have a hack squat. So you would just use like the pendulum or the Smith machine. So you can, you have to know enough to kind of be able to customize it yourself, but. Moving on to dips. Yeah, I know I've been talking about this a lot, but it's that important, the amount of just release I got in this left trap in the left side of my neck. Everything's just feeling so much better and it's really obvious on this movement. I can really focus on leaning forward, but keeping my chest up and really feeling that pec activate as opposed to really feeling a restriction in that trap. So not only is it gonna help with my lat spreads, opening up my lats, things like that, but just overall shoulder stability in general, the way that the neck musculature ties into, you know, your clavicle, your scapula, everything. So yeah, game changer, 12 weeks out. Yeah, that's money. Able to get more weight, better stimulus. What is wrong with that? Nothing. <clears throat> Hit some shoulders here. Get some triceps, biceps. And then uh, get a little post-workout break. Yeah, definitely better overall stimulus. Traps aren't feeling tight, feeling a lot more activation in that medial delt. So I was able to go quite a bit heavier. Just all these epiphanies from yesterday. We just got a little less than 12 weeks and I am just buzzing, just feeling so good, feeling so ready. Just gonna get weird. I've had some, my professional athletes have done it but they go to, they'll go to like Germany. <sighs> Try that other one, Scott.
Yep. Yeah, just slowing things down there, it felt so good. We'll hit one extra set here, just a little bit lighter so we can get more in that rep range and just keep that tempo so we can really control that negative. I think that's the biggest thing people miss out on when it comes to, especially any kind of like lateral raise work or just shoulder raise work in general, front, lateral, rear, is we're so eager to get the weight up that we just put it right back down as opposed to getting the weight up and then controlling it down. You're forcing more time under tension. That muscle's gonna be under tension longer, so. It's just obviously going to grow more. Yeah, so just going cross cable extensions, kind of the best of both worlds, hitting that lateral head, hitting that long head. It's just, uh, just a really good overall tricep stimulus, very diverse, really kind of just covering a lot of bases. But um, yeah, with this, we'll typically hit about four sets, 12 to 15 reps, just try to burn things out, modify weights accordingly. And, uh, and then we'll get some biceps and just call it a day. Okay, so just finishing with some bicep curls on the prime machine. We're gonna switch things again, bias the length and range. So going to cam position five, and we'll just knock out three sets here. 12 to 15 reps, hopefully, you know, getting failure in that range every single time. Probably could get a little bit more range. Maybe drop the seat down a little bit lower so you get a little bit more of a stretch. <sighs> oh man. Cramping up a little bit. We're able to get 15 for all the other sets here. So we'll see if we can at least still get 12. And then of course, hopefully we can get 15. But on the other, I guess, thought process is if we could get 15 for all the reps, we probably should have gone heavier. So pros and cons. Yeah, so 12 and a half, so still within that range. Um, so in theory, next week we'd want to come in, choose the same weights, try to get 15, 15, you know, 13 and a half, 14, 15. And if we get 15 with all the sets, we just keep pushing the weight up. That's the kind of easiest way to think about progressive overload is if you can use the same weight for all the sets, then you probably didn't go heavy enough. So bump the weight up until you can get all your sets for that same weight again, then just keep bumping the weight up week after week after week. Pretty simplified process for growth and continual progress, but we're gonna get out of here, get a little post-workout and uh, come back for more. Cardio, that is.
Okay, so we are back at the house. Uh, got an Evagen shipment today, so got some EVP, see if it focuses there, some non-stem pre-workout. So for on the days where I'm working out a little bit later and don't want to disrupt my sleep, a huge, huge game changer is the uh, Evagen Greens, Evo Greens chocolate flavor. So I add this to like oatmeal, shakes, things like that. And uh, yeah, for digestion, for overall health, just making sure you're getting your macronutrients and your micronutrients all in uh, is a great solution. And then uh, they actually just sent me this, which I use from time to time, just a little light and tight, little detox. Um, yeah, kind of helps with just keeping like water down, keeping uh, liver and everything functioning pretty well. So definitely give that a little try sometime, but move that out the way. We're gonna make our post workout. So we got our chocolate brownie flavored rice and grinds from Pride Foods. Gonna just put that in a bowl and then we're gonna get the uh, kettle going, get some hot water fired up and uh, make our Ninja Creamy too. So isn't that right, Odin? Boy, good boy. Okay, so on today's menu, we got the Ninja Creamy. Uh, I threw some actual oats in here just to get a little bit of a crunch and texture, sneak in some extra carbs. We adjusted our uh, cream of rice to reflect the additional carbs there. Typically I'll go like cream of rice and a banana. So just the amount that I would typically use for the banana, I just used oats just for the uh, creamy. But then we're using the lowest sugar, lowest fat we can find of almond milk. Uh, and then just this vanilla oatmeal cookie protein from the bum raw nutrition. So mixing it up a little bit. That's what it's like being a uh, supplement freelancer. So I got Labrata Pro Series way at the gym. I've got the Evagen supplements here and there because Labrata doesn't make everything that I need. And then of course, just for flavorings, honestly, just for the, for the creamy to be able to mix it up. Raw's got some great flavors too. So waiting on the water to heat for the rice and grinds. We're gonna throw this into the creamy, I like to uh, kind of like put some hot water on the outside so you don't get those ice crystals. But other than that, man, this has been a game changer. So we'll get this fired up. It's gonna be a little loud, but you could put me on mute. Cream of rice, typically I just go like a five to one ratio of water to cream of rice. I find that it's a pretty good consistency. So uh, we got about 35 grams of cream of rice in here. And so we'll add about 175 grams of water. Let that sit, kind of whisk it, um, and then throw it in the microwave for about two minutes or so. Get it to a really nice, good like brownie batter consistency. And then we're just dumping ice cream in here, protein ice cream, low fat, low carb protein ice cream, and just growing. Mm. We're gonna make sure we get all that. Mm. Wow, that was probably the best one I've made so far. And it's probably the lowest calorie one I've made so far too. So we got it right where I like it. Uh, still a little runny, kind of just like a brownie fresh out of the oven. We're gonna get our ice cream, just scoop that whole thing in here and uh, yeah, just chow down. So post-workout meal gains, but the phone eats first. All right, so this is gonna be a great combo. But yeah, macro wise, we're looking at about 300 calories total. And we are just, just under 12 weeks eating ice cream and brownies for post-workout. Not always gonna be this way. Don't always crave this, but as of right now, this is the way to go for post-workout. So a little brownie, a little uh, vanilla oatmeal cookie protein from Raw and uh, Mr. Seabum himself. And yeah, still meeting all the fitness goals. Everything's moving in the right direction. We are sitting at about 205 right now, cutting pretty consistently. 
So uh, yeah, as long as the progress isn't stopping, we're still getting our fat boy post-workout on. But mm, yeah, that's amazing. We'll probably film a video showing you how to make this so you can do it with your Ninja Creamy. Uh, definitely recommend the vanilla protein, the vanilla oatmeal cookie protein. Probably my favorite. Gotta be probably up there with top two. I think I like this. I really like the glazed donut flavor too. I don't know why, it just tastes really good. Very versatile. But before this melts, I'm gonna eat all this and uh, we'll have to see you on the next one. Bo Alexander, Adapt Fitness, checking in tomorrow and uh, hopefully we're not getting our ice cream taken away. Bye.